Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I am going to be telling you about the top 10 mistakes I see new alpaca owners making. Now, these common mistakes will sometimes also apply to llamas, which I will let you know. Uh, but these are the common mistakes to avoid because they only cause heartache, vet bills, and the death of your alpacas. So I wanna help you guys avoid all of that. So be sure to watch this video until the end. You can also subscribe to this channel down below for more videos about alpacas and llamas. And you can find me over on Instagram and TikTok where I'll also answer questions that you guys have about these animals. And if you like the dress that I'm wearing in this video or any of the clothes that I wear in my videos, be sure to check the link down below in the description. disclaimer I want all of you watching this video to understand that I have rescued alpacas out of bad situations because of these common mistakes that I'm gonna be talking about when it comes to animal husbandry especially for these alpacas this isn't a matter of opinion these are facts so if you want to own these precious creatures please treat them right before we do get started I do want to give a shout out to fly fix uh, this is a product that they sent me that I've been trying out and using and it has been so beneficial this year, especially since we have had a crazy fly problem. And so this is a fly trap that is uh, eco-friendly and chemical free. You just need to add some bait into the cup. I like to use stinky old bananas. You can also use other food waste or even manure or wet cat food. I set up a fly trap by my stables and another in my backyard. Uh, by the next day, they were full of tons of flies and they have continued catching flies. I really like this design. It works super well, easy to use, and has really helped me control the flies. So if you guys are interested in trying this out, be sure to check the link down below and look for my discount code. Okay, so the very first mistake that I want to point out, and this is where usually all of these mistakes start, and that is by buying from bad breeders. It is so, so important to buy from a reputable person, somebody who is putting time and care into their alpacas. So bad breeders, livestock auctions, brokers, livestock traders, those are some of the worst places to get alpacas. And if you, um, you know, start out with something like that, it's just going to go into more and more mistakes. And if it's a bad breeder, they're not putting the time and care and energy into their alpacas. Then after that, you're going to end up with alpacas that are going to have health issues and just all kinds of other things going on um, that is just going to cause more heartache for you. And a lot of times too, um, these bad breeders or livestock auctions or places like that are encouraging um, more of these mistakes that you are going to see throughout the video. So uh, if you're going with a good breeder, um, they're probably already going to be telling you about some of these common mistakes and helping direct you to caring for your alpacas the correct way, making sure that you avoid these things. So that's one of the first things that I think to start off with is just making sure that you are going to a reputable person that cares about the animals. Some of these uh, breeders or livestock brokers will be selling animals that you know, really shouldn't even be being sold for money. They should really be going to a rescue. Uh, being released to a rescue so that they can get the help that they need and so you definitely want to avoid places like that and make sure you are getting your money's worth. A good breeder is going to provide you with support for starting your own alpaca herd and usually they'll be registered with the Alpaca Owners Association of America and they won't be encouraging you to make any of the following mistakes so listen closely to these. Next super, super common mistake that I see is getting a male-female pair, buying two alpacas of the opposite sex. And this usually comes from bad breeders. This is a huge, huge no-no. Um, you never ever get a pair of alpacas. They cannot be kept together. Uh, so you don't want a male-female pair. It is actually um, going to be just either males or just females. Uh, so you wanna get three 
um, males or females and those are going to be their companions, their pasture buddies. You cannot um, keep a male and female together. So uh, if you do want males and females, just make sure you are getting three of each. Anyone willing to sell a male-female pair of alpacas just knows absolutely nothing about these animals and is really only in it for the money. Alpacas and llamas are not seasonal breeders, nor do they have a heat cycle. They are induced ovulators, which means they release an egg when being bred. That means they can become pregnant at any time. Even when we want to breed alpacas, we monitor breeding and control the frequency. When left with females, males will continue to breed females over and over again, even if she is pregnant. This can result in lots of health complications. Overbreeding will give females UTIs. It can also cause for the baby to be aborted. And if the female stays healthy long enough to get to giving birth, the male can actually end up killing the baby trying to breed the female during delivery. Um, this is actually something that's caused because of a hormone spike. So it's obviously not a common issue with other livestock, but alpacas and llamas are very unique. So please don't make the mistake of keeping males and females together for either alpacas or llamas. And of course that brings us to our next mistake which is keeping alpacas alone. Separating your male-female pair into different pastures or different stalls is not enough. They need companions and it's really important to keep three together of the same sex. One reason for this is alpacas actually sleep in uh, rotations and one is always uh, keeping alert, watching out for danger. So they actually take shifts when they're sleeping and a single alpaca is going to be sleep deprived and stressed out constantly. So that's uh, one of the big reasons of why you need three. Um, of course, sleep is super, super important to health. And there's lots of studies done on how if you don't get enough sleep, and this applies to animals too, uh, it can result in a lot more stress and health complications. Now, before you say, oh, my alpaca isn't alone. He lives with sheep or a horse or a goat or uh, God forbid a cow. The next very common mistake that so many people make is housing alpacas with other livestock. First, let's make it very clear. The only companion for an alpaca is another camelid. So llama alpaca groups are perfect. A sheep, goat, horse, chicken, or what other, whatever other animal you can think of is not a companion for an alpaca. It's absolutely devastating seeing so many people arguing and justifying keeping an alpaca in isolation surrounded by other species of livestock. If you're thinking, oh, my alpaca likes my goats, consider this. What choice do they have? No, alpacas do not prefer sheep or other animals over the companionship of other alpacas. And if given the choice, they will choose other alpacas. Don't get animals just with the intention of being cruel to them because you want to cut corners. And here are some other reasons to not consider housing alpacas with other animals. Sheep have different feed requirements than alpacas. If considering keeping them together, make sure you can still feed the alpacas separately. Alpacas need copper in their diet. Copper will kill sheep. Sheep and goats carry heavy parasite loads that will kill alpacas. Tolerance of this is much higher in sheep and goats and not something that alpacas can survive. Not to say that there aren't exceptions or situations in which this will work. Let me give you my situation for example. I have Nigerian dwarf goats that live with alpacas. First consideration is that they are a dwarf breed. I do not recommend anything other than dwarfs or minis around alpacas. Goats can be bullies and large goats can injure an alpaca. Now let's talk about parasite load. If I were living in a different climate, I don't think I would be comfortable housing them together. We live in the desert where water is very limited and it also limits the parasites. It's very common for people around here to not even treat for parasites because they just simply don't do well here. In a place where it's greener and rains more and there are more insects or even snails, it's a different story. And lastly, it's also important to consider that this is what you call a closed herd. No one comes or goes, and that's a huge difference. And then cattle. Cows should absolutely never be kept with alpacas. Cows carry disease that has been known to wipe out entire herds of alpacas. But even if that isn't a problem, cows can easily kill an alpaca just from an accidental injury, even mini cows. 
it is just beyond irresponsible to have alpacas with cows. And to me, it is probably one of the greatest mistakes uh, that I can see someone making. Sadly, many people keep a single alpaca with goats or sheep uh, with the misunderstanding that they're going to be a guardian for these animals. And so to make that very, very clear right away, alpacas are not guard animals. This is a very, very frustrating thing. Trust me when I say alpacas are not guardians. Uh, there are some very curious ones that will sometimes chase a cat, a skunk, maybe a small fox, but they are not reliable for any type of predator that is going to be large enough to actually hurt a goat or a sheep, um, even baby goats and sheep. Uh, they are not good protectors and they're actually a lot weaker than a sheep or a goat. And if you do have alpacas and other types of livestock and there's some sort of predator attacking them, usually it's going to be the alpacas that are going to get injured first because they are a lot more delicate than other types of livestock. Here in America, our predators are wolves, coyotes, mountain lions, and dogs. An alpaca cannot defend itself, much less anything else from those types of predators. Maybe if the dog was a Yorkie. So please do not get an alpaca to protect any of your livestock. I promise the alpaca will be the first one to get killed. I've had someone arguing with me uh, one time that their alpaca was going to protect their cattle. And some people just won't learn until the animals are dead. Llamas are successfully used as guard animals, but even they enjoy having a llama companion. So two llamas of the same sex will do a better job at guarding. Now let's talk about shearing. Alpacas and llamas are fiber animals that have been bred to grow lots of hair. They do not shed. Uh, there is no such thing as a wild alpaca. They are a domesticated animal, so like a poodle whose hair grows continuously, uh, they'll need someone to cut it off for them. Alpacas must be sheared once a year in the spring, and this is vital to their health. If you can't get your alpaca sheared every year, this is not the right animal for you. Alpacas will suffer from heat and the weight of the blanket. They can even have a heat stroke during summer and die. Heat stress in alpacas is something that is very serious. I personally recommend getting a professional shearer. There are several that travel the country shearing at farms. We use Alpaca Tom, whose information will be in the description. He serves the western and southern part of the U.S. and also shears in New Zealand. Shearing yourself can be difficult as it's a big job and you do need lots of equipment. And sometimes people are like, oh, my alpacas don't need to be sheared because it's a Surrey or they lay in their water to cool down. Okay, well, first, Surrey still needs to be sheared and depending on your climate, they can sometimes go every other year, but it still does need to be done. Two, water can actually make the situation a lot worse. If they are laying in their water, yes, obviously they're hot, so they should have been sheared in the first place. If they're sitting in their water without having been sheared, the water will mat up the hair, making the body even hotter and unable to cool off. This can cause rotting in the fur and skin, something that can happen when you also hose them down or spray water onto their backs. When freshly shorn, uh, this is not such a big deal, but if your alpacas have fiber, do not wet the top of the back with the hose. They love getting sprayed down with the hose. It's a great way for them to cool off, but the water should just be on their chest and legs and avoid the back. The pressure from the hose will ruin the coat. Uh, it'll cause matting, skin rot, all of those issues. Uh, getting it rained on is very different and that is perfectly okay. Next common mistake is when it comes to feed. Alpacas need grass hay. Do not feed them alfalfa or Sudan. Alfalfa is a great choice for older alpacas, pregnant or nursing alpacas, or alpacas that just need to put some weight on. But it should not be 100% of their diet. And you should not feed the average healthy alpaca alfalfa. Grass hay is what's going to keep them healthy. And Sudan grass is a cheap, fast growing product that is not great for any livestock really. It can even be toxic to the animals. So it's best to avoid that and get some high quality grass hay. Last common mistake isn't necessarily a requirement, but it can be really helpful. The mistake is not getting a guardian for your alpacas. Remember I mentioned that alpacas are not guard animals? They actually need one, and llamas are a really good option. The two best guards for alpacas are llamas and dogs. You don't have to have one, but a guardian is really important to keeping your alpacas safe. 
and maybe you're in the city and you're not worried about wolves and coyotes. Well, just remember that dogs can be even more dangerous. Thanks for watching this video. I hoped this video helped you on your journey of becoming a responsible alpaca parent. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought. And don't forget, you can also follow me over on Instagram if you have more questions about these amazing animals. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.